Hi kids, here's a quick update on the uh, VTech saga. Because I had an idea this morning. But there's one other thing that I can try. Before I replace the entire VTech, I can replace this oil pressure switch. This is a relatively new one that I bought a while back. It's really hard to see because this uh, heat shield is in the way, but this is the VTech. If you think about it a minute, you'll understand what you're looking at. I'll pop the wiring harness loose and take this 22 millimeter socket, put it right down inside this hole over the switch. There. This is what you need to remove this switch. This is a, uh, what is this, a 22 millimeter deep well socket. All right, so there you can see our new plug on our new switch. This is a 22 millimeter, which I advise you buy, because with this socket, you can remove this switch without having to take the heat shield off, without having to take the VTEC off. All right, so here we are again, another day, another test drive. I've mentioned before that my road floods in front of my house. I'm about to prove it. This is the road that runs in front of my house. We've had a pretty bad run of weather here in Nashville. That uh, little orange dot that you see way down there in the middle of the road, that's a cone that's probably four feet tall and it's floating away. Anyway, so back to the test drive. That's just one of the dramas that goes on in my neighborhood. Um, Feel the awesome force of the Honda Element and the 24K, K24, 24K motor. What do we got, 160 horses on this thing? the switch worked for about 10 miles and then it went into limp mode so we're going with a new VTEC guys I've never bought a new VTEC let's see what happens well kids you're never gonna believe what happened I went home got online my favorite uh, parts supplier and tried to order my very first brand new VTEC valve and I immediately got an email saying the part is on back order and there's no telling when there's gonna be any in stock so now what do you do? Well, I'll tell you what I did. I decided to try and rebuild my own. So for the most part, these are the components of your VTEC. This is the main valve body. That's your spool in there. This is your solenoid. So when people talk about a solenoid spool valve, that's what they're talking about. This solenoid kicks in and out, activates this spool uh, via oil pressure. This is your oil pressure sensor, your oil pressure switch. Oil goes in here, and once it gets up to a certain pressure, it activates this switch, closes these contacts. This is just a plug that I had on there, and this is your heat shield. That is the maker's mark of a genuine Honda uh, VTEC. So if yours doesn't have that on there, it's probably not real. There's another one on the valve body. Where was that? Oh, there it is. It's that PNE. I don't know what that stands for, but that's also on all of these if they're actual Honda units. Once you get this apart, you find out that there's really not much to it. So you can see that move back and forth. This is all part of a system that uh, moves your cam back and forth to allow your engine to kick into a different cam load. 
depending on demand. So I have no idea if this will work, and I don't really care. At this point, my car is broke. At the very worst, it will still be broke. So I broke this O-band taking it off. It's uh, old and crunchy, so we're gonna go with a new one, new O-ring. These are not factory parts, because uh, I don't have any factory parts. I'm winging it. I'm winging it. Oh, that's about perfect right there. Okay. Solenoid valve goes on top of there. These are these are supposed to be like non-removable bolts. But uh, a quarter inch socket will take that right out. See there? Good old American quarter inch. I think I can reuse that O-ring. This is my 22 millimeter today. And uh, the last thing to put on is the heat shield, which just has this one bolt that holds it on. 10 millimeter. Well, folks, will this thing work? I have no idea. I actually don't believe it will, but hey, I'll be happy to be proven wrong. So here's our rebuilt valve. Let's see if we can get it to work. I'm not gonna do an in-depth VTEC install video for two reasons. One, my neighbor's mowing their yard, and two, uh, Sue at 1A Automotive did the best VTEC install video I've ever seen. So if you really want to see an in-depth video on how to change your VTEC, I recommend that video. There's really no reason to watch anybody else's. The tools I'm going to show you, though, for changing the VTEC are, of course, my favorite pliers, an actual torque wrench, and this is probably the most universally handy tool to have on any Honda. 10 millimeter wobble socket, uh, eight inch extension, a ratchet. That's all we're gonna need. All three broke loose, then I like to take them out by hand. And three bolts, and take the valve out with it. Screens look clean, nothing looking bad. It's actually like super clean, this uh, particular VTEC valve. That's a junkyard unit. And here's the one I just rebuilt. So let's see how it goes. Put one bolt in, get it down there, get it started. As, uh, this job is mostly done by feel. See there? Got the first bolt already. I might be a little better at doing this than you are because, frankly, I've had too much practice. Mechanics have a saying. If you're changing this part enough times to get good at it, something's wrong. Your hand tight. Now we have to come in with the torque wrench. And be sure when you're buying your wrench that you get one that'll do inch pounds. When you get it tight enough, you'll hear it click. About there. There it is. And there's the last one. Once we've done all three, I'm going to go back and check the first one again. All right, yeah, still good. Now we plug in our two connections. Get our hose back up and we're done. That's it. Clean the tools up, put them away, let it warm up. I'm going to take it for a little test drive, see what happens. Will this work? I don't know. I doubt it. I think if this were, uh, were an effective way of dealing with it, somebody would have already talked about it. 
since nobody has i'm gonna assume that only an idiot would try this and i am that idiot valve so far has about 65 miles on it no issue i could not go nearly that with the other one so are we on to something here all i did was take it apart and clean it so i think what i've been dealing with all this while is actually two issues the first issue was the wiring harness being uh, compromised and allowing it to short out i fixed that problem the car worked for six months and then it came up with another issue and I think that other issue is the fact that this car did not get regular oil changes before it came to me. I think there's a lot of crap in the oil system and I think every once in a while some of that crap breaks loose and lodges in the VTEC. Anything that gets in there and stops that spool from moving could cause this issue. In a way I'm kind of glad that the uh, parts supplier did not have an original Honda valve because it uh, forced me to think outside the box. And I've got to wonder, you know, the advice that we're given when we get a VTEC issue is always change it. Change it right now. Change it immediately. Change everything and change it with only Honda OEM parts. And I've never gotten a good explanation of why. What's wrong with it? It's just, it's not a complicated piece of machinery. It's a solenoid and a sensor and a spool. There should not be that much that could go wrong with it. So we're going to start cleaning these out on this car for a while. So for right now, kids, we're going to call this fixed. If the problem comes back, I will tell you about it. We're going to see how this works. Stay tuned. Tune in next week. Like and subscribe. See you next week on Scavenger Type.